Today I'm um, doing a watercolour painting of this little French scene, the little village scene. Um, uh, there is the, the scene at the top right. I'm just going to draw in some basic lines. Don't going to get too, um, too bogged down with the details of these, uh, these shapes. Um, I'll, I want to just put uh, like rough ideas or rough um, sketches of where these uh, shapes will start and finish. Um, ideally, I want to let the, the uh, brushwork do the painting rather than slavishly um, colouring in the lines as it were that's when it starts looking amateurish when you start just going right up to the edges and making sure everything looks well it looks it looks like an illustration so this is going to be like a loose watercolour scene so here you can see I'm just in effect just putting rough lines in and it's, it's good to do to hold your pencil at this angle so it's like more or less close to the top and then you you don't fall into that um into that pattern of getting every line just how it is on on the picture you don't want to do that uh, you want the picture really to uh, paint itself as it were um, but we're just putting these guidelines in as to where all these um, uh, where where our paintings going to go, so uh, yes, yeah, so just a few little ideas there. We've got a window there, and a window around about here, and maybe and one down there as well. And at this point, you can actually leave out what you want to leave out, or um, just add in a few. Um, a few extra touches if you like. I usually like to put a couple of birds flying around and in my picture I'm going to put a couple of people uh, walking towards us which will give us uh, it'll give us an idea of uh, a sense of um, scale um, with the painting. So this is where I'm going to be putting on tree and fetch it down around about there and this is the the right side of edge of the um, the the lane and we had a little uh, water pump in our, in our photograph so I'll just put it there if you wanted to you could move him over to the other side so I'm just Give myself an idea of where the heads will go there. Um, the heads have got to go a little bit in, well, they've got to go in line with that, just over that um, wall to the left. As long as I've got my head, my heads in that, on that level, then I should get away with it. Okay, so now we're going to start painting getting some colour in this. First of all, I'm just going to wet the top part. We'll just work on the sky first. So I'm getting some... Um, just wetting this area. Just roughly up to the, the tree areas and where I've done the painting. It doesn't matter if you go over at all. I'm getting a couple of colours together. I'm using a bit of this is purple. Just a little bit on the light side. Now a little bit of French ultramarine. Let those blend together on the page. And I'm tending not to go right up to the edge with this because I don't want it to buckle and you'll find that by leaving the edges a little bit you'll find that it holds 
it holds the paper together. So now I think that will do for the for the sky. I'm just going to add a bit of colour here for some distant trees. Nice autumnal colour there. And I've allowed it to to bloom into the sky, so it's nice and nice and faint. Now add a little bit of green. Just identify the edge of that building. They're not being too, too, um, too precious. These areas of paint. You notice the trees that I painted in first. They're starting to run down now, which is all right. Let's just give it as a nice soft edge there. I'm using olive green here. Olive green, my colours I'm using here are uh, yellow ochre. Olive green. Oh, sorry, no, it's uh, cadmium yellow actually. Uh, olive green. Got a bit of uh, crimson alizarin. And some bit of purple. A little bit of burnt sienna as well. Won't use all these colours, just that's what I've got on my palette there. So when you see it starts to run down there, it's gonna create um it's gonna create its own own lines and extra pigment there. I don't want that to happen, so turn it on its side and let it run away. I'm holding it quite uh, about 90 degrees there and I'll lay it down I'm happy with what it's done that's a mixture of the um, burnt sienna and the uh, yellow, the cadmium yellow, just stretching that, those trees up a little bit further. A little building there, so I'm just cutting around that. I'll leave that to dry. Okay, so now it's dried, I can start getting the next layer in, which with a, a slightly smaller brush, so I'm using a bit of a, get this warm colour. Now this colour here is a little bit of uh, purple. And French ultramarine, and a little bit of that um, crimson alizarin. I don't want to use any blacks at this stage, or Payne's greys, or anything. Not until the final stages. I want to try and keep it as light as I can, for as much as I can. So that's quite a, a harsh yellow down there, so I've just lifted it off by adding some uh, clean water to it. Now these areas here are going to be going at the back of these trees and the buildings, so ideally I want to make that quite dark in a bit. 
this colour here again, French ultramarine, a bit of purple, and a little bit of crimson and alizarin. I did a little bit of green to that actually as well. All the time I'm adding different colours to the mixtures and it just it makes for a more interesting painting rather than having just one straight flat colour. If you can see lots of different colours mixing on the page it just looks more interesting. Bit of purple on there now. I'm going to create a little bit of texture there by just dabbing that and at the front of there as well. Nice reddish colour here, crimson. You can also use opera rose. So the front of this building wants to leave it fairly light. So I just add a little bit of that yellow colour in there. This is all going to dry much lighter than, than it is at the moment as well. So my painting, the light is coming from the top right hand side, so any shadow I need to do has to be on the left hand side of the particular, of any individual shapes. This is the uh, chimney stack. some of these trees in the distance while this this paint is drying a couple of uh, branches tree trunks got some darker trees in the foreground but just at the far at the back, when I say in the foreground, in the mid ground, but just at the back of the building. So, and there we go. Put a few on the little shadows in these in this tree on the right and a couple of branches. A few more branches there. All I'm doing is indicating that these are trees. If in the right in the far ground, far background, we've got a little house. I just thought it would be nice to just bring the eye through the village.
lifting some of that colour out of there to really graze it out. I'll let this dry for a bit. Once that bit's dried, we can go for a next layer of colour. So I'm making a mixture of uh, that purple colouring again with the crimson alizarin. to show the, the shadow part of this, the, the shapes. Now I'm making a lovely rosy kind of colour here with a bit of the purples. I want this side of the wall to be very warm. That's some of those windows here, but I don't really need them at this stage, so I'm going to plot them out. So if you notice I'm not covering every single bit of this, leaving a couple of specks, it's, it's just little reflections of light, it just makes the shape look more interesting. But now I want to make it a little bit darker on that, at the back of these, these trees and the, uh, the buildings, so I'll put a little bit of extra dark colour there, I just added a bit of French ultramarine with the uh, crimson. And I'll just identify the shape of this this dark wall. Sauce is playing up there. Excuse my faffing. There you go. It went on economy mode. Turn it off every two or three seconds. Warm colour here for these trees. Adding some darker colour as it comes down to the back there so it's very much in shadow and we can just link those two shapes together.
的赞助。Shout out now to the far left building. Now at the front of this uh, of this uh, house or this set of houses, we've got some more. We're going to darken these trees here, and I've also got a little area. We've got some more trees there in the front of this little uh, this part here. Grown around the, the front of that, and it pushes it back a little bit, and it also helps us to, to as we paint around this this bush at the front. Yeah, we'll add some warmer colour to there in a bit. a lovely uh, reddish colour this I'm just being mindful of putting um, contrasting colours next to each other this red next to the green and the blues next to the reds And now as I paint this part, I'm being mindful of the light hitting the top of these bushes, so I'm leaving that a light, a light area. Got a little post there, so I'm identifying that. Negative painting that was around the, this post. And here we've got a little wall. So I'm just going to put some stones at the top of this wall first. bring this down and we've got some bushes at the front of this this wall so I'm painting around them as it were I'm creating a negative painting there so these uh, the shape of the brush the bushes will will become evident as we basically don't paint them Just identify this part here as a tree. Now we'll create the, the verge here where the, uh, the road meets the grass.
just creating a few shapes in these bushes. Telegraph pole there, and one so about there. A bit nervous about doing this, so so the paint doesn't run into it. Now I'm going to do another one, but I think this part of that, that front of that the this side of this building is a bit wet, so if I start messing about with that, it'll run into it and look all right old blob. So we'll leave that until it dries. Destroy some of this these telegraph poles. So they just fade back a little bit. Um, we'll get these characters sorted out. So I just put a little of a dark colour around the feet, the legs I mean. I just add some uh, light warm colours to this character, the one on the left. And do something to contrast. To the next character. The ground on the bottom of a bit of a shadow there. Start thinking about shadows now. Well, the shadows are coming from the right hand side, right away across this lane. Got some big faces out here. Detail to that tree and put that water feature in. Now, start adding those extra little features. Hopefully, that'll take the viewer right away down so this is the part where I'm putting my darkest part the darkest bits of painting so it's really a mixture of uh, my dark parts you use a lot of paint a bit of paint grey a bit of blue um, and a little bit of burnt sienna a window at the front there just to 
identify that this is a little shed. And the same with this part here. Just um, added a few dark parts to some of these characters. I just want to bag there. Just have a quick look around. Does it need anything else? Just a couple of just little points, pointers there. Dark part there. And I think I like just a couple of little birds in the sky. I like to put an odd number in. It kind of works that way. So there you go. <coughs> and this is the finished piece. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.